The Eerie Map. This is another map that kind of stands out in my mind from my childhood. I, rem I specifically remember the Blue Room right before the Baron of Hell. I really enjoy the music on this map, how just kind of creepy and somber it is. It's going to be probably inaudible to you guys on YouTube, sadly. But it's good. And plus, I, I think it's a little more uh, audible on my first LP. But it's a, it's a great little tune. I like it. Oh, you actually have to use there? Wow. How picky. Yeah, I, I actually like the use of blue on this map quite a lot. It just, uh, it's just very striking. There's a few secrets that I never really figured out on this map, though, which is kind of weird. You know, I've been playing this game for... I mean, I've been playing this game kind of dedicatedly for the past 14 years. There's still stuff I have no idea about. I mean, I just take damage twice there. Wow. There's a there's a certain timing to the uh, damaging sectors, but um, it's easy to screw up, sadly. Okay, now. Oh, I hit the corner. Damn it. You can just open it like that, but I, I like to run in there before it closes just to show off. The fact that I'm uh, recording and playing at the same time doesn't really help either because uh, it does. It, it's not hurting the frame rate that much since it's only at 35 frames per second anyway, but it is making it a slight bit jerkier, so there is that. Uh, the blue. The blue. Yeah, I've always, always kind of liked this blue area. It's one of my favorite things about Episode 2, because Episode 2 doesn't really conform to any uh, real style. Um, when it comes to making Episode 1 maps, there's kind of a strict style. Uh, John Romero made uh, rules about designing Episode 1 maps. He has like a set of rules that he follows in regards to uh, how they're made. Shit, I almost died there. And uh, it's what most mappers will follow when they're trying to emulate the Episode 1 style. But with Episode 2, it's a little more abstract because of Sandy Peterson and his wacky shenanigans. You basically just kind of follow a certain texture theme, but otherwise just kind of make everything random and abstract. It's There's no real rhyme or reason to the whole thing. I'm trying to figure out the secret that I can never get. It's um opening this. This opens up somehow, but I don't really remember how to make it open. I want to see if I can try and get it in this video. I would look it up in like a map editor to see, but um, maybe I can just trigger it uh, normally. But I think it maybe it has something to do with falling down right there. No, it just kind of does whatever the hell it wants. I know there's a soul sphere in there. That's what I'm mostly uh, worried about, is getting that soul sphere. I think you might have to fall down a certain way. I mean, you can see it's there on the map, but um, yeah, it's one thing I never really figured out, and I think it does stump a lot of people because you just you just find it and it's just open suddenly. Well, that's great. My rad suit's running out, so it's probably not going to be much of a uh, use now. And neither is that. Okay. Well, let's see. Hmm. Maybe falling down right here opens it. No. All right. Let's reload and fall down uh, over here. I think there's a... Okay, well, it doesn't seem like anything will work for it. Maybe if I run over here, press some stuff... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of dicking around right now. Alright, well, since nothing seems to really work, I'll have to look into that and see what exactly triggers it. I mean, I know I found it in my last LP, so I do want to go to that area. I mean, I don't want to just let it slip by. But, uh... I'm not exactly sure what triggers it. It just kind of happens. Which is weird. I probably could just use the chainsaw on this Cacodemon since he's solitary and, you know, there's no real th uh, worry. I did pick up a Berserk, though, so I can use it on the Baron. I just have to hope he doesn't spam on me. Actually, this isn't the best area. There's not a lot of room. Let's feed him some cells. Oh, he died. Okay, cool. There's some shotgun guys there. They're just kind of a dick move. Yep, the episode two marble theme. You know, it's there's a lot of theming going on with the episodes. It just kind of happens. Yeah, 
gonna go back to the plasma rifle to take care of these bigger threats, just to speed it up. Because without the super shotgun in this, uh, Kako demons actually do take a bit of time to uh, defeat. I know there's a blue armor in there, so I won't get that. If you go over here, this is a part where you can actually get yourself stuck. If you uh, if you let that rise up while you're standing on it, it, you'll take some damage and then you'll just be stuck. So yeah, don't do that. I found that out the hard way. Luckily it didn't happen in my last LP. There are some dumb things I did do in my last LP, but that wasn't one of them. Another thing I do plan on doing is playing more of a E2M5, because I know in my first LP of this, I uh, just kind of let the level slip by without even really paying much attention to it, because uh, generally if the secret exit is quicker than the normal exit, I like to uh, just kind of go straight for it. And that's one thing I certainly did with that uh, last LP. I especially got bad with uh, E3 M6. I basically skipped right to the this, this secret exit because I didn't want to play that map, but I'll definitely, I'll definitely cover more of it even though I'm not particularly fond of that map. These side areas I never really uh, did much with. Damn. I'm screwing up my fireballs here. Because uh, in my first LP I just kind of ran straight for the exit, but I kind of want to show off what's over here. Might as well be a little more thorough since this is for the anniversary. Might as well show off everything I didn't. Oh, go away, imps. You're being close-minded. Okay, so there's two Bruiser Brothers. Oh my god, just like in episode one! Get some rocket action in, see if I can finish them off with my punches. They're a little easier to Tyson, but you, ha you do have to be careful, because sometimes they'll attack a little more rapidly than you might expect, and then you have to uh, potentially take a hit, which can be very painful. Alright, now let me go back and see if that one secret has opened, because that's just one I never figured out how to trigger. Though I think it's probably not worth it at this point because um, I already have almost full health and uh, it's still not open, so I'm uh, I'm not going to bother with it. I know I said I would bother with it, but you you guys have seen it before if you've seen the old LP. It's just a room full of specters, and then uh, there's a soul sphere in there. And really, I'm just I'm not that uh, <clears throat> not that picky. Although let me go back and get that blue armor that I did leave in the room. I hate how you have to hit that switch. Yeah, I'll probably open up a map editor and see how you get to that room with the specters. Because I've never figured out exactly what triggers it. It's always been kind of a mystery to me. It's like the mystery of Mew or something. Alright, so let's beat this map. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is always kind of weird, this wall right here with the faces. I think this is the first time you actually see that texture in the game, and as a kid that was always kind of freaky, honestly. Okay, if we do this, we can get on there before it rises up. Ooh, he almost hit me. Okay, good. Let me get a soul sphere that way so that, that still works out. Not too bad. Boom. 